Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Lean and I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. As you can probably tell from the accent, I'm Scottish, so you might hear some weird phrases that I like to use in Scotland throughout this video. In this Azure Advent calendar session, I'm going to be talking about Azure Migrate. Now I'm entirely biased, this is my favourite product within our range, so I love talking to our customers about the functionality and sharing my knowledge about how the product can help them on their data centre migrations. So some of this session will be about Azure Migrate, but it'll also be about data center migrations in general. That's what I've been talking to customers about for the last couple of years. So I want to impart some of the tips and tricks that I've gathered along the way and share them with you today. So let's dive into this session and get started. So this session has been designed to get you thinking about what Azure Migrate can do, get you thinking about what's possible and how you can use that in your environment and show you resources for where you can go in the future. So I've been speaking to customers for a number of years now about their data center migrations. They are thinking about moving to Azure or moving to the cloud because of a number of factors. And some of those factors are things like their data center has run out of capacity. They physically either can't squish any more hardware into the actual data center or they've ran out, they, you know, they can't add any more servers because they've ran out of space. And they're at that point where they have to either invest quite a bit of money into traditional hardware or tin, as we call it here in Scotland, and add that into their data center or look at investing in the cloud instead. There's also other things like software end of support. And I'm sure as a lot of you are aware, Windows Server 2008 R2 goes end of support in January 2020. So there's not a lot of time to actually migrate and deal with some of that. And obviously SQL Server 2008 went end of support in July as well this year. So there's those kind of catalysts, those kind of triggers that are making people think about moving to the cloud and moving about what they're going to do. And there's some questions that come with people thinking about the migration to the cloud. And they're common questions, if I'm honest. It's the same customers, it's the same questions that customers ask over and over again. So if you're sitting there thinking about a data center migration and you've got all these questions, please don't be frightened because other people have these questions as well. And some of these questions are, where do I even start with a migration? How do I start this journey? How do I understand what I've got within my environment and, and control it and then plan for that migration forward? Um, can I get some help? Is there a framework that will help me in doing this? And to be honest, we've got a lot of resources available at Microsoft to actually help you. We kind of describe it as three things. So we break down that migration into process, product and program. And our process part is something called the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework. Now, we shorten that down to CAF as we love our acronyms. And this is a best practice framework that has been developed by people like myself, Microsoft employees, our customers and our partner network. And it's basically a load of documentation that can help you on your journey that shows you some of the steps you have to take and some of the advice that others have taken and given from their journey as well. Now our product is Azure Migrate and it's the tooling that helps you assess and migrate your workloads into the cloud. We also have a program called the Azure Migrate program and sometimes you'll probably hear it being referred to as AMP because again we love our acronyms and it is a program where you can apply, tell us that you're doing a journey to Azure, that you're moving your workloads to Azure and we will assist you. We will give you some of the tools and funding to be able to do that journey and help you on that journey. But today's session, as I mentioned at the top of it, is about Azure Migrate. And I want to take you back to how Azure Migrate started, where it all began. So back in September 2017, at Microsoft Ignite, um, the product team launched Azure Migrate and it was announced and it, there was a lot of buzz around this. In February 2018, it actually went generally available, which ultimately meant it was production ready and available for customers to use on their production environments. And since then, it's went on a number of iterations. It's went on some evolutions and it's taken on board some of the feedback from our employees, from our customers and our partners. And it is what it is today. Um, and 
Recently, at Microsoft Ignite 2019, there was a bunch of new features that everybody has been crying out for announced. So I'm super excited to see where this product goes and how it can actually assist our customers in moving to Azure. Azure Migrate has the key scenarios covered. So those key workloads that you have within your data center can actually be dealt with within Azure Migrate, whether that be your data or your SQL workloads or your server workloads, or even things like your websites and your virtual desktop workloads as well. We have all of those scenarios covered. Those, those main services within your own data center, we have those covered. We have the integrated tooling for discovery, assessment and migration. We have those capabilities today. And again, we have those capabilities for those key migration workloads that we talked about. Working with our third party tooling, we've integrated some of the ISV tooling as well that you all love and know. And to be honest, that's a great step forward. It means that you can pick and choose and you can understand quite quickly which tooling is available to you at this time. And it's going to be the central repository. It's going to be that one-stop shop for everybody to go into and track their migration journey, whether they're at the assessment, the discovery, or the migration stage. They can utilize the Azure Migrate portal to find out and to track that. As I said, Azure Migrate has a bunch of assessment capabilities. For a while, we've been able to discover VMware and Hyper-V virtual machines, and we've been able to provide analysis on that discovery information and tell you whether your virtual machines have been ready for Azure, how much it would actually cost, and a bunch of inf other information around that. And as I said, at Microsoft Ignite 2019, a bunch of extra functionality was rolled into the tooling. So we now have the ability to assess physical machines, which is a great step forward because, to be honest, we all still have those physical servers running in the corner of our data centers, and we need them as well. But it doesn't just limit itself to physical servers. So if you're running servers in another public cloud, such as GCP or AWS, you can actually assess them with Azure Migrate as well now. And a functionality that I'm super excited about because I'm always getting asked about it when I'm out at customer sites is, can I take this spreadsheet of information that I have about my infrastructure and get some costing analysis on it? And up until now, the answer's been, well, if I spend some time, then maybe, yes, I could get you something. But now we can actually take that spreadsheet, put it into Azure Migrate, and then in 10, 15 minutes time, we will have that actual information back from Azure Migrate. It now has the ability to import data via a spreadsheet and then output some assessment details as well. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to tell customers about this and utilize it. And lastly, but definitely not least, the assessment capability, other functionality that was added recently is agentless dependency mapping. And again, this is something that all of our customers have been asking for. It's key to what they're trying to do. And it helps customers understand how their, all their servers interlink with each other and discover each other and without having to install an agent on it. No longer do you have to sit there and either manually install it, which some customers I worked with had to do, or script it through group policy, a PowerShell script, or even SCCM as well. So we have a bunch of assessment capabilities built into the native tooling within Azure now. And you know what? On this slide, I don't have the best point about any of this. Our assessment tooling is free. <laughs> Azure Migrate server assessment is entirely free to use. Now, I want to mention something here that I always mention to my customers, doing an assessment is key. So many people think that they can skip this step because they know their infrastructure and unfortunately they always get tripped up. They always get tripped up by something that wasn't documented, by something that they thought was decommissioned and their migration falls over, their migration hits a hurdle and the business think it's bad because they haven't done a full assessment, they haven't understood how everything interconnected, they haven't understood their, their server estate enough to be able to do that migration and do that migration well. So if you're looking to do a migration to Azure, make sure you do an assessment. It's entirely critical to your success. And you know what? I use this analogy. If you were buying a new car, you would do some research about it. You would go and test drive it. You would read about it. Um, you would touch it and feel it, right? Why wouldn't you do that if you were doing a migration to Azure and doing an assessment is no different. It's no different than taking that new car that you want to buy and taking a test drive. So assessment is key to your success.
Now, the other functionality that we have within Azure Migrate is the ability to actually migrate those workloads into Azure as well through it. And we do that through Azure Migrate Server Migration. Now, we've been able to migrate a bunch of workloads before, and we've been able to do that quite successfully. And we have functionality like test before migrate. So you were able to actually test what would happen um, if you moved that workload into Azure. Would it respond correctly? Um, would the server operating system fire up correctly? Is there anything missing? Is there any components that you had installed on it that would interfere with Azure, making it not work? Um, so you were able to do that test plan. You were able to do that without being destructive to either your Azure environment or your on-prem environment. That capability is still there today. But now we announced at Microsoft Ignite 2019 that you can actually do agentless VMware migrations and it's, it's generally available. It's available for production workloads now. And again, that's a super great uh, functionality that we have now. Because um, again, installing agents, installing other tooling into your environment has always been a stumbling block for a lot of customers, especially the customers that are migrating because they don't have the capability to expand even further into their data center. They don't have the ability to install another server to help do that migration and be that migration stepping stone. Now, something I want to cover, um, as again, I get asked quite a bit, is about Azure Site Recovery or Azure Migrate. <laughs> um, for a long time before Azure Migrate came along, our migration tooling that we suggested was using Azure Site Recovery or ASR, as you'll hear it mentioned. Azure Site Recovery is our disaster recovery tool. It's the tool that helps you build that redundancy into your applications, that helps you build that second data center in the cloud so that if something happened to your first one, you would be able to get everything back running um, from your second one in the cloud. Now, it was never designed to be a migration tool, if we're all honest, but it, it was able to do the migrations for us. Now that we have Azure Migrate Server Migration Tooling, it's the dedicated tool for migrating your workloads. We recommend that now 100%. You can certainly use Azure Site Recovery if you want, but it's not the tooling that, but it's not what the tooling is designed for anymore. Azure Migrate Server Migration should be the tool that you use to migrate your workloads and Azure Site Recovery should be the tool you use to build in disaster recovery to your workloads. Wave planning is something that you should all be thinking about when you're doing your migrations and thinking about your migrations for going forward. And by wave planning, I mean, think about how you're actually going to migrate your workloads. You're definitely not going to move, migrate all your workloads in one night and have it all there the next morning in, in Azure. That's not how it's going to work. So you need to do wave planning. So start with things like your easiest workload. So if you have, say, an intranet server that hosts your intranet, you know, that shows everybody what's on the canteen menu um, at lunchtime each day, look to migrate that first. Look to learn how that workload migrates. Look to learn if your the landing zone that you have set in Azure is correct and functional for what you expect it to do. Um, you pick your easiest workload as your first workload because if something goes wrong, you don't want the business to be screaming down your ear while you try and fix that. And yes, okay, your intranet is an important component of your organisation, but it's not the most mission critical and I'm sure your businesses probably could get on without that intranet being there. But if you started with something like your payroll server as the first migration workload into Azure and something went wrong, people would definitely be screaming and you would be definitely under a lot of pressure to bring that back up. And you want your, your migration to be successful. So you want to pick an easy workload and start building up to the harder ones. But at the same point, you have to think about all the components that make that first workload work. So you have to have things like Active Directory or ADFS or Active Directory Federated Services set up or Azure Active Directory. Something has to be set up so that you can still authenticate, you can still do the DNS queries. What does your DHCP look like? All of these questions have to be answered before you do a migration. And that's what I mean about wave planning. You have to think about the components, you have to understand what you're moving and what needs to be moved around about it. Planning is key to a migration, it really is. I know it's not sexy, it's not fun, it's not cool. Techies, we all wanna just be getting hands on and doing what we have to do. We don't wanna be sitting planning with colored spreadsheets, but sometimes it's a necessary evil. Now, five things that I always tell people to 
to think about when they're doing a migration and to make their migration successful is think about your migration approach. Like I was talking about wave migrations, think about how you're going to migrate things and how you're going to do it. Are you going to be doing everything as infrastructure as a service? Are you going to do everything as a, plat- a platform as a service? Or are you going to start thinking about software as a service? Then break down what you're going to do. There isn't a blanket answer for every workload within your organisation. Sometimes you're going to have to use IaaS solutions. Sometimes you're going to have to go down the SaaS solution way. There is not a one fit fits all answer to be honest to that question. The next one is migration tooling. Now I've covered about Azure Migrate today and it's a great tool. I love it. It's a free tool. It's a native tool. It supports a lot of workloads, a lot of those key workloads everybody has in their own data center. But to be honest, there are other toolings and there are other and some of those third party toolings that are now built into the Azure Migrate portal can be more beneficial than Azure Migrate to some of our customers. But you need to be key and you need to be very keen when you pick that tooling. Make sure you're picking the right tool for what you need and not which one you've seen the best marketing on. Take advantage of our offers. Take advantage of things like the Azure Migrate program. Take advantage of hybrid use benefit. Take advantage of reserved instances. There's a whole bunch of offers that we usually have in place to help you do some of your migrations. So please leverage them at the right time and the right space within your workloads. Migration partners is also something to think about. We have a lot of um, third party companies that specialise in data centre migrations. That's the only thing that they do. It's the only service that they provide to their customers and they do that time and time again. Every project they do is a migration. So hopefully if you pick an experienced one, they'll be able to take the learnings they've had from other migration projects and bring them into your migration project. And that way you can hopefully build even more of a successful migration using their knowledge, their tooling and their expertise. And the last one is training. And I think we often often overlook this when we're doing something like a migration journey. We think too much about the journey, we think too much about the tooling, we think too much about the way of planning, but we forget about the training. And it's key as well to success my successful migrations. Your staff have to be trained up to understand Azure. They need to know what's it, what it's going to look like. They need to know how to support these workloads now that it lives in the cloud. They need to be confident that they know how to use that. So make sure your staff are being trained and that is part of your migration plan. Now I've given you a whirlwind tour of Azure Migrate and some of the migration pl- steps that you have to go through if you're moving your on-premise data centre into Azure. Um, but I've written a blog post that covers off some of this in more detail. So please do head there and check that out. And please do reach out to me. Please do ask me some questions. You can get a hold of me um, on Twitter or through my blog or through our team blog. So please do reach out if you have any questions and I'm happy to cover them either on a one-to-one basis or even do more videos or blog posts about it. Thank you so much for sitting with me through this session and hopefully you've learned a bit about Azure Migrate and data center migrations in total. Thank you to Gregor and Richard for setting up the Azure Advent Calendar and I look forward to seeing other people's videos. <music>